Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, Casual Watch Talk Live. I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you for all the people active in the comments already. Well, we should have a pretty good show um, for you today. We're going to look at awesome watches for $500 or less. Um, I originally put this best watches for $500, but there's so many. <laughs> like It would be like, this is the best thousand watches for uh, less than five hundred dollars but we tried to keep it to a, a reasonable amount but before we dive into it i'll introduce my my panel i've got jason from watch rolling my my co-host we've got patrick from pocket watch time youtube channel Hi everybody and we've got seiko todd <laughs> uh well, should we do a wristwatch check in fact todd shall i uh do you want to kick us off with your wristwatch i will it's it's a seiko oh <gasps> Ooh, this is the uh, 6139 this is the coke they call it the coke because it's obviously red and black and um this was uh you know one of the ones made in japan it's from 1970 and it's one of my favorite color combinations even though again i'm getting a lot of reflections but um but that's what i'm wearing today awesome awesome and uh patrick are you are you ready how what you went sure, sure i'm still in the honeymoon phase i'm wearing Ooh. my uh meteorite dial zodiac super c wolf cash so money I was, I was really hoping to have gotten my uh, my rubber strap by tonight but uh i guess that hurricane slowed it down so it's uh, it's hiding in ocala tonight and uh maybe it'll get here tomorrow oh wow hey federico yeah. answered your question by the way yes he did yes, he did about the zealous so I'm, I'm definitely going to have to uh, steal that little sound clip of him saying my name so I can put it into my intro. <laughs> oh, I what didn't see that. Well, yeah, what was it? Oh, I, I asked him pretty much about collaboration watches. You know, mm -hmm. what does he think about, you know, kind of like this watch with the, this one's from watches.com. And, and I know that, you know, um, Zodiac's coming out with another release that, you know, they just dropped a hint. It sounds like it's worn and wound. And, you know, just sort of these uh, collaborations and, you know, what does he think about it? And uh, in normal Federico fashion, he gave a, uh, a pretty short, abrupt answer, but mm -hmm. he was relatively kind. So uh, that, that's always a good thing. But I, I love Federico's honesty. Yeah, that, um, I think that Zodiac's really captured the imagination because uh, I was chatting on our, our watch uh, chat group that we've got at work and uh alvin who i showed his watch on the last time he actually saw it and he they're, apparently they're sold out now and he was asking whether asked whether we'd had like some special in because of mike and i was like no we haven't we haven't <laughs> so yeah i think it's really captured the imagination that meteorite watch oh yeah definitely yeah i'm a fan <laughs> jason are you uh are you ready for a wristwatch check <laughs> boom my Helm Von Natu, since on its OEM engineer brace. Look at that thing, man. It's like scuffed up. Helm. It's scuffed up because I do stuff with my watches. <laughs> well crazy. loved. Crazy. This, this. Uh, I might have to glaze past this one because I've just realized that I've been wearing ID uh. tape and arm and off. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was preparing for the uh, show, and uh, now that I've only got the uh, the... Now I've only got the Garmin, a Rolex, and a few watches that I inherited left uh, kind of leave the leave the garment on a bit sam you know um, i don't talk very much in this show and you just like totally brought clut me off of my normally 35 minutes of talking i'm just kidding <laughs> oh were you gonna were you telling a story about your helen helen well you could talk oh, about it more because it might be it might yeah, be in the 500 it might be yeah sorry sorry for cutting you off no, i'm just kidding um, i'm just kidding um well well let's dive into it shall we so let's dive into our best picks for watches $500 or less. Before I dived into that, I found something really cool on the internet. Did, have you seen this? G-Shock will actually renovate your old G-Shock yes. for $100. Really? Yeah. I don't know if this is a new thing, but that is really cool, that. Hmm. So, I yeah, they'll completely it. restore your old G-Shock for you. For, I think it's $100 plus shipping, which if you've got a G-Shock you really love, I'm sure it's only selected models that they can get parts right. for. But certainly this, uh, this uh, the DW5600 that hasn't changed since, huh. you know, the 80s. Yeah, I think that's really cool, man. Because yeah. the average G-Shock, I mean, like a, a normal G-Shock is what, like $190, 100 bucks. Yeah. But if you have this thing that you really, really dig, 
and you, and they're able to replace it and basically make it look like new old stock, I guess, right? Yeah, guess exactly. So. It's worth it to me. Hmm. Yeah, and if you've if you exactly if you've worn one for a long time, you know, if you it, perhaps if you've had it, you know, where you're in the military or like a, one of the space ones, or I know that um, uh, Robert, who's on the Facebook groups, worn one of these every day for years at his work. Uh, and there's no real avenue for you to go other than replace the watch, isn't there? Whereas this obviously now gives you a service where you can you can renovate the watches. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, I love the idea because, you know, they obviously have a whole bunch of now multiple thousand dollar G-Shocks. And I would never feel comfortable spending that kind of money on a digital watch when, you know, there's not a, a normal repair. And, you know, who wants to have a, a two thousand dollar brick on your wrist? So this makes me feel a little better that, you know, at least if you spent that kind of money on a G-Shock, you might be able to, you know, make it a lifetime watch. Mm. Yeah, because other than that, uh, there's another website, isn't there, called, uh, I don't know if anybody's been on it, I've certainly bought bits of it, called packparts.com, and yeah. they you can actually buy old old Casio parts on there, but it, the shipping's quite expensive, so you've really got to go. But I've bought seals and gaskets and stuff like that, but that's a very much a DIY approach where I'm sure that this gives you a, a warranty and stuff. But anyway, so that was pretty cool. So let's dive into it. So first up, Jason... Uh, this was one of your picks, wasn't it? You actually gave me the brief of any Seiko diver. So I picked Heck, what yeah. seemed to be the best value. I love the turtle. So I'll put that bias oh. in. But No, you, you totally, I mean, you could have picked any one of them. You could have picked the turtle, the samurai. I mean, I've seen some sumos on there, some shoguns. Getting close to $500, they, they usually start around six. But I've talked about it in my podcast. If you're a newer watch collector or a new enthusiast and you can't, figure out, you know, do your due diligence before you buy something that's really expensive. But if you really have to get something like right now, because most of us kind of want to have something cool to wear, you can't go wrong with the Seiko. You can't go wrong you know, with finding something cool on eBay because I've bought a ton of Seikos on eBay and I've never had an issue because there's certain things to look at, you know, like, and we're not trying to poo-poo anyone, but, you know, I buy from the States or from Canada. There's certain countries I avoid, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you can look at on eBay, you can look at stuff like the seller's ratings, how many, how long have they been around? Like if the seller's been around since 2007 and they have, you know, 1100 five star reviews, you're pretty, pretty sure you're going to get a, an actual Seiko and it's going to be a quality product. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I think there's so many that whatever color you like, whatever finishing type you like, if you, if you know enough to know where you like the crown, you know, do you want it on a bracelet? Do you want a strap? Do you want to get aftermarket? I mean, you can do all kinds. Of, you know, you guys know that. 20 millimeter, 22 millimeter, that's kind of the going gist for Seiko as far as lug width. You can do so much with this, so with, with these things. And you can take that watch and take it and go beat it up and do stuff with it because it's going gonna, it's gonna to stick around until you figure out something else you really want that costs a little bit more money. So, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a yeah. great pick. Um, just going through the comments now. Uh, Tom N, who's been a long time subscriber, he says that he listens to many of these recorded, but this is the first time joining live. So welcome, Tom. Welcome. Thanks, Tom. With the 6138, uh, yeah. the man, uh, love that 6138 UFO is an awesome watch. I'm not sure I'm familiar with it. Maybe we'll look later if we've got time. Mm -hmm. um, next up, uh, this was one of my picks. I had to throw a veyer in there. I, I really, I've the ones that i picked i tried to pick ones that i've reviewed before and i've reviewed quite a few veyers they've been very generous uh, over the years sending me watches in but this uh, I, I picked this one it's under 500 dollars. it's a solar quartz watch mm -hmm. uh, the great case and everything i just love the 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 way that ryan and reagan who are the two owners have formulated their veyer brand so i had to put the, the veyer on the list there nice Oh, hey, so real yeah. quick on that one, Sam. Yeah, yeah. So I, I bought that. Remember I bought? I told you I bought, it was the C4, the D4, the field watch back in the day. And it just didn't stick with me because most field watches don't. But I get an email from Ver, And they're like, hey, we're going to open our, we're opening our Amazon store. Oh, and yeah. here's a one-time code. And I don't want to go into, you know, they were doing it for people that had purchased before. So I don't want to like, but it was a pretty good discount. Mm -hmm. And it was on some specific models, and this was one of the models. This one or the forty-two millimeter. Oh, yeah. And so my buddy T, who's active duty, who do, you know he's currently test driving the Notice Avalon Two for for us for a review on the website. But he's newer into watch enthusiast space, but he does all that stuff. So I got this 
the 42 millimeter this for a disgustingly good price. Like I would say the same price I paid for my field watch close to it. And so I just gifted it to him and say, Hey man, here you go. I know you wanted a solar watch. I know you've been looking at Vera for a long time and he was over the moon. But when I held it, I was like, man, this is a really, the, the, the finishing on the field watch was okay, but the, the level of finishing and stuff, the difference between this, mm -hmm. this watch and the field watch was night and day. I mean, yep. this thing is this thing. If anyone wants to buy something and can get their hands on one, and you don't want to worry about whining it or any of that junk, mm -hmm. this thing is a a tough little. It feels like a tough little watch, and it's beautiful. It's really well made. Yeah, the crowns. I really like the grip on the crown. Very industrial, and the bezel's got a nice action to it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Todd. This was one of your picks. This was yep. the the seagull. Um, let's get rid of that. So <laughs> that's a big ad. <laughs> yeah, that's that a is big, big ad. ad. Yeah. So yeah, um, Mark at, uh, at uh, Long Island Watch is a is a, a seller of these. So if you get one from him, you can pre assure that it's the real thing. Uh, for some reason, these seagull movements are showing up in a ton of different watches. So if you go on AliExpress, there's a bunch of them that will show up that are cheaper. I mean, I think you can get these for some places for a couple hundred dollars, but uh, I don't quite understand what the deal is. Uh, but I have uh, I have mine right here. So all the mine I put on there, I actually have. Uh, and I, I wanted to go with uh, all mechanicals, just not nothing against quartz, but I thought it would be a little bit more uh, fun just to, to do mechanicals because we know we can find a lot of quartz options under $500. Mm -hmm. Now this one, and then of course you have the... Um, a real pretty movement in the back. Uh, you know, the blued screws are not uh, heat blued. They're, they're chemically blued. You know, this whole thing is a, is not a, you know, expensive watch to make, but of course where it's being made in China, the, the labor isn't very expensive, but the cool thing about this one is you see, it's called what is called the star Trek logo. It looks like just like the, uh, you know, uh, one of the, you know, one of the more recent Star Treks. This is actually the 1963. This is actually the logo that is more true to the origins of the watch. So the red star kind of came uh, later, as I understand it. So this this one is is more true to, um, you know, what was originally there as a as an emblem. And uh, this one is actually made in Hong Kong or, or assembled in Hong Kong. This one is what they call the Hong Kong Ed. So there's some guy named Ed in Hong Kong that puts these together. And this is one from him. I actually got it, I think, from somebody off of the Casual Watch channel. But I have it on this uh, on this, you know, green NATO, which is really a blast to wear. And uh, it's a it's a great watch. I mean, it's a it's the cheapest mechanical chronograph you'll buy mm -hmm. anywhere. Um, I did have a problem. You know, it's one of many of my watches, so I don't you know it doesn't go into the rotation often but I, I remember it was like a misty rainy day i wore it outside and it fogged and i hadn't touched it's an almost a new watch i hadn't touched anything i'm like okay uh, note to self that you know a 300 dollars mechanical chronograph uh is not necessarily great in the rain but <laughs> you know but yeah his has a swan neck on it right that's true yeah swan neck yep. regulation yeah with the sapphire crystal mine has the classic uh acrylic crystal which I kind of like too. It's kind of old fashioned, but Marks are really nice. Yeah, he has the one that's yeah. a little bit more advanced. Yeah, David Detroit Mint uses that Swan Neck regulation mm -hmm. on his Cobra ones as well. So if anybody's not familiar, it's you turn, you basically turn a screw to regulate it rather than the little little two levers to regulate the watch. Um, in fact, I think it's a uh, our friend Mike at uh, Zodiac. I think that the movement manufacturer that they own. Uh, pioneered that, I believe. Excellent. Okay, next yep. up, yep. I, I, next I, yeah, I threw a little bone to. Uh, I've given C uh, CWC a hard time. I give them a bit of a hard time on the British watches one that we did, but I, I, credit where's credit's due. Granted, this is four hundred and fifty eight dollars at f pounds, so it it, but the pound is doing so poorly at the moment that it probably is going to average out to near enough five hundred. Uh, $500, but a little cheeky one there. I think this is a good all-round watch. Now that their their prices have kind of leveled out, I think that this is actually quite a reasonable. It's quartz, but you're getting a real watch that was 
it, a style of watch that was issued. Maybe not this exact one, but they they do have ones that were issued. They're, they're no longer standard issue for the mm-hmm. the Brits for the MOD. But I think this is a, a solid watch. I've I've uh, I've owned the G10. I've owned one of these similar ones. Very well, very well made. So sort of throw a little little nod. Has anybody else? Other than me owning a CWC, has anybody else seen one mm-hmm. like the G10 or anything? No. I'm Never hoping I run across one up in New York this All month. Right. Yes. I'm hoping someone has one. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Sorry, Todd. No, no worries. No, no. I just have never seen one in the wild. Yeah. Me, me neither. Yeah. Uh, next up is this is from uh, oh, Mike yeah. at my work, um, who is a huge Skurfer fan. Huh. Uh, I've never seen one of yeah. these in person, but I hear yeah, they're very well it. made. Sam, uh, so my buddy that I that's doing the notice review for for the website, this is the second watch he ever purchased. He purchased a Skurfa, but the yellow one. Oh yeah. And for anyone that wants to follow my Instagram, his tags at Life Watching Life Doing, and it's you know, <laughs> T surfs and swims and does all kinds of stuff in the water. Has goats and chickens the whole nine, but uh. That is it. Yeah, that yellow one right there. That thing, I'm going to tell you right now, I would probably say it beats out what I'm going to show. Uh, wow. The helm. if Because it, it was built, it's built so well and it's so light that it, the helm is, the, the steel one, this one is, is heavy. And I, you know, I have a seven and a half inch wrist. I'm not small. So to me, it's kind of relative. But that thing right there, I think if you wanted to get in and out for, I think it's under $300, if I remember correctly. It's well, like 275 or something. Yeah, it's a testament yeah. because these are all sold out. Yeah, I mean, this is in pounds here, but yeah, 234 pounds. So yeah, you're probably right around the 370, 70 mark, 350, 370. Yeah. But they just sell out st- almost straight away, it, it looks like. And it, it, he does do a mechanical as well, doesn't he? And there's a few different styles. There was yeah. a titanium one. I think maybe this treasure seeker might be their um, mechanical, but obviously it's a, a bit more expensive yeah. than $500. And, right, and me... the gentleman that owns the company is a real diver, like a legit... That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, throw me, uh, throw me some info on this because I've I've never heard of this brand, and I'm just curious. How did everybody else hear about it so much that they're sold out? Well, because oh, yeah. I, I tell you, I, t- I tell you how I heard about them is they're actually it. There, it's a brand that's well known by people, recreational divers, um, and I don't know whether it's uh, also. I, I believe the gentleman was in the military as well. I think he was in the British Navy. I, I can be corrected on this if that's not correct, but uh, TJ, who are um, you know, who's joined us on the show a couple of times, who's a, a naval aviator, he used these for recreational diving, and there's a few other people I know who recreational dive that are, are, are quite well known because it's it, they were made by divers for divers. Okay, I'm gonna say because that's that's quite a testament. I mean, any small brand that can sell out their entire line, I mean, yeah, yeah. hats off to you. That's a, mm-hmm. that's a pretty good. They're a pretty good thing to do. Yeah, we're getting a couple of people mentioning uh, Loria as well. That's another good one. We haven't got it on the list, but that's another good one. I- I'm still, I-, I owned a Loria and I just couldn't get my head around the acrylic crystal on it, but I own a Speedmaster with acrylic crystal on, so I don't know. It's one of those things. Um, yeah, so that's that's Skurfa. Uh, and we should have included it in our Best of British because I believe it's a British brand, actually. But, um, yeah, he is. Yeah. Awesome. And next up, I had to throw a little uh, little nod to our friend David Detroitman. So the uh, the watch that Todd helped um, helped consult on. This is the Speedy. That oh yeah, let me uh, let me put that on screen. It's not uh, one of mine. So I'll show it. Yeah, full transparency. I got sent one of these in for review. So this mm-hmm. we'll, we'll use the uh, contains product placement or whatever the tag is. I'll make sure I, I attach that on. But yeah, Dave's a really passionate. A small micro brand watchmaker. The mm-hmm. watches are. This is a quartz one, but he does mechanicals. Uh, a lot of them are under five hundred dollars. Actually, I mean, one of my favorites that he ever did was the um, uh, was this uh, was the quartz version of the the Citizen Bullhead that he recreated. Which uh, which this one. This is one of my favorites he's ever done, and it, for mm-hmm. a, for a, a truly iconic quartz watch. Um, or an iconic look to a quartz watch for two hundred and twenty-five dollars. I think you can't go wrong with with anything. Plus, you 
plus you're actually supporting a brand that is actually based in Detroit and mm-hmm. run by somebody that is from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> mentioning, no, mentioning no other names. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I always love to get that dig in there. Uh, okay, so that's Detroit Mints. And then, uh, Todd, you, ah. I mean, you won here. Then, but this is the winner if, if this is a competition, but I'll let you uh, introduce it. <laughs> so, yeah, the, so there's is, is probably most people know that the Hamilton has been making the khaki field line in various forms for a long, long time. And uh, uh, I'm a huge fan of Hamilton. I, I don't have any more modern Hamilton. I've sold them. I have vintage Hamilton. But along those lines, I've got my uh, khaki automatic. Yeah, but this is an LL Bean branded version. So this yeah, is a baby. Yeah, this is you know this is more vintage. Uh, I think it's from the '90s. They were doing yeah. this one, I believe. Uh, and the cool thing is that on the back, for example, it mentions Hamilton Watch Company, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is where yeah. it was based when it was in the U.S. But um, but these are just just really well made. The cases are really well made. Uh, the movements are bulletproof. They're all at a derivations you know and the new ones have the probably the powermatic 80s in them so they have 80 hours of power reserve um i just uh, you know the heritage of these these you know these go back to world war ii uh hamilton provided a, a ton of military watch uh, of these types of watches for the military uh, not just the u.s military but uh, the, the uk mod and, and others too and it just I, I just love watches that have um you know heritage and and, and purpose uh, that were you know done for a reason and these hamiltons were very much done for a reason and they're very reasonable so you get an automatic watch for under 500 dollars uh, you could probably get them cheaper too at, like on joma shop or something like that and uh you know anyhow i just you know teddy baldazar did a really good uh hamilton historical one as did TG, tgv did one too uh, kind of going into the history of, of hamilton so those are well worth watching to understand yeah. this brand more yeah, like Hamilton. Hamilton actually gets its name from the was it the founder of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or one of the original uh, mayors there, who was a something lawyer. like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, and it's yeah, a, a now owned, of course, owned by Swatch Group, but was mm-hmm. a very proud for a long time American brand. Yeah. Made a lot of nautical clocks and things like that in aviation. Mm-hmm. Yep, I have a Hamilton pocket watch with its original case. And a uh, booklet from 1920. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. wow. Um, I mean, Patrick, have you got any, do, do you have any Hamilton pocket watches? I've got two. So oh, yeah. uh, uh, my grandfather's pocket watch that he was given to him by uh, the Packard Motor Car Company was a oh, Hamilton. Oh, nice. And, oh, um, and my other Hamilton is called a Hamilton 923, which they call their mini masterpiece. And it's just one of their sort of prestige models. Uh, the only gripe I have with Hamilton in the world of pocket watches is their cases are not standard size. So hmm. for every other watch on the planet, if you pretty much lose a case, have a damaged case, you can buy a replacement. But you can only really replace a Hamilton case with another Hamilton case. So yeah. kind of what Todd was saying, you know, it's good that you got the original case because it, it makes it a lot harder to find a replacement. So They're like the think- Apple of the 1920s. <laughs> yes, they are. Them and the Howard Watch Company, they were the two guys who wanted to break the rules. Hmm. Yeah, so um, you basically have to cannibalize another pocket watch if you want to wear it. Uh, next up then, Patrick, this is one of yours. And this uh-huh. is a watch. I was surprised that you picked this one, actually. Uh, but it is a great it is a great watch. I've never really looked at it with any sort of, you know. Well, the, the, the under $500 range is a hard one for me. And the reason it's a hard one for me is... If I buy something under 500 bucks, it's a pocket watch. And I just, I, I don't, mm. I mean, it looks really bad, but I don't think I own a single wristwatch under 500 bucks oh, because wow. every watch that I buy in that price point, you know, I, I, I collect pocket watches too. You know, you can get a lot more pocket watch for 500 bucks than you can get a wristwatch for 500 bucks. So I'd rather save my shekels and get a non 500 buck wristwatch and buy just, you know, a really spectacular pocket watch for 500 bucks. And so for me to get into the $500 realm, once again, it's a theme that I say all the time, there just has to be something special about it. And, you know, even though I know Swatch gets a lot of, you know, just bad press for being a conglomerate and all that Mm -hmm. stuff, 
But the, the System 51 movement, I just think is so neat. So for anyone who doesn't know what the System 51 is, it's their pretty much automated automatic. So, you know, you, you don't need humans to put this together. You know, it's, it's as assembly line as assembly line can be. And, you know, it's actually a pretty nice watch. And, you know, most swatches are plastic and, you know, bioceramic. But, uh, but their irony line is actually made out of steel. And so you actually get a steel watch with an automatic, you know, you know in-house movement, if you want to use that fancy word. You know, they, they designed it. They built it. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a hell of a lot of good watch for the price. And this one with the blue dial... It's just good looking. Yeah, it's funny when everybody else seemed to be going. I know we have quite a few panel members that uh, that join us that went through a fossil watch phase. I actually had a swatch irony. That was my fossil phase. Was the mm -hmm. there was a metal swatch irony uh, watch um, for a long time. But I believe this one. It wasn't the mechanical one. It was of course. But I believe this um, system fifty one is Chris who I do the podcast with. I believe this is actually what got him into mechanical watches. So, yeah, they did. Uh, they did a really cool thing, and I like the way they do the rotor as if it's a kind of a psychedelic, um, mm -hmm. you know, a psychedelic print. No, this this was a great pick. This was a great pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's unusual too. Yeah. So, I mean, anyone who really wants to get into, I mean, I think, you know, even though Todd proclaimed himself the winner with the hacky or the, the Hamilton khaki field, I'm actually claiming Jason the winner with his uh, Seiko Prospects. Because you know that's that's the best watch you could buy for five hundred bucks. I mean that thing's just gorgeous, and I knew someone else was going to pick it, so I didn't put it on my list. But yeah. uh, but you know if if you're really looking for a watch that, in my opinion, has some personality, you know, I really think that Swatch is just a, a pretty awesome watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, it's a great. It was a great I'll, pick. I always say Seiko Prospects is kind of like a really fancy Camry, right? Like you buy a stock Camry, but then you get like a really good paint job on it. And maybe put some rims on it and stuff. And it no does. one knows it's a, it's an NH35 inside. You know, you're not going to be anybody, but you're going to look really cool. Yeah. Oh, that's a gorgeous watch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it gets great gas mileage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, next up, I had to, I had to, I had to put an Islander on here as well because mm -hmm. this is, you know, he does such a good job of these. I reviewed a similar one to. I actually reviewed his version of the Samurai. But this uh, is his version of the five SK, five KX, I think, or the old Seiko SKX. So he he basically takes similar cases, puts upgrades and movements, puts sapphire crystal on them, puts a really high quality bracelet on them as well, and all of that for under three hundred. I think this is a these are he does he has a lot of fun with the designs, and I think they're, yeah. they're a quality watch by the end of it. And he does all the quality control himself. We're calling it. We're, I'm talking about Mark from Long Island Watches. Yeah. My wife mm -hmm. has an ISL 41. She loves that thing. The field watch. Okay. Which, which one is that actually? Let's... ISL 41. You can just type it in the search state. You'll pull it up. Um, they, all their stuff's numerical. Okay. ISL yeah. 41. Yeah, it's awesome. The loom's great. It, uh, the case is made well. ISL um, 41 or 40, one of the two. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But she has the white dial one. And uh, yeah, one of those ones down there. And, uh, it's like a Seiko it. 5 almost, right? Yeah. Very similar yeah. to a Seiko 5. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, man, the thing at nighttime, like when you, the loom, mm -hmm. it's a nice little, it's a nice little watch. Yeah. She loves it. She says it's comfortable. Uh, the strap was a little rough, you know, full disclosure if anyone buys one, but if I remember right, it's 20 millimeters, so you can get whatever you want. How'd you like that? Uh, Sam, did you do the ISL 65, Sam? The Samurai yeah. one? Yeah, I, yes. Yeah, I did the Samurai one. Um, I actually, I didn't put it on this list just because I think he's discontinued the colorway that I reviewed. Um, but there's a there's a full review on the channel. But yeah, it was the Samurai case. It was similar to this one, except it had a, gr a gray blue uh, bezel on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I liked it. I thought you did a great job. I thought you did a great job of it. Yeah. Yeah, it sure does. Cool. Uh, next up, this is this is one of your cheap ones, Patrick. Where you went, you went a bit over budget here, but I mean, I went five twenty-five. I mean, couldn't you call these guys? Inflation. Up say, say, hey, can you just sell it to me for five hundred? I mean, you know, they, they got to give you a discount. And yeah, absolutely. Kind, kind of sticking with my uh, my swatch theme, you know, the uh, the Mister Jones is kind of 
in my opinion, the new super cool wannabe Swatch. So they kind of did what Swatch did when they first came out. And they just made fun watches. And, you know, they are definitely fitting that bill. And so, you know, they're a, they're a small manufacturer. You know, they, they pretty much, I think they're, they're England-based or UK-based. Yep. And, yeah. uh, you know, they, they just kind of make a fun watch. Eh, I'm not going to lie. Maybe $500 or 525 is a little much for that. But, you know, it, it definitely hit the, the price point. And, you know, I, I just think it's a fun watch. So I, I don't really have, like, you know, any real-life experience with it. I just think that, you know, they've got some personality and, you know, if you're going to buy a watch for 500 bucks, you know, you walk into a room, someone's going to see that and say, what the heck is that? And you get a fun story. And, you know, Mm -hmm. to me, that's kind of what this collecting, you know, hobby is all about is, you know, every time I walk into an elevator and some guy walks in, you know, I'm checking out the wrists to see if I can strike up a conversation about something somebody's wearing. And if someone walked into an elevator and was wearing this, we'd be immediate best friends. Cause I'd just be like, you know, you, you know, something and I like you. So, you know, this is just kind of a cool watch. Yeah. It'll never get old. That mystery dial uh, thing. Yeah. Will it with the, I think, I think it'll never get old. That I, I listened to a, the, a, an episode of the superlative podcast and Ariel Adams interviewed the gentleman that owns uh, the company and is like the chief designer. Mm-hmm. And just hearing him talk, he was so passionate about just making fun time pieces and, you know, original designs. And there's even a thing where they, uh, will source artists and use the artist design. So not every design you see on there is their own original. They they will work with hmm. local artists or artists from around the world and then use their designs for some of the dials. So I thought that was pretty cool too. Yeah. Yeah. That is a really cool <clears throat> actually. Yeah. Cause I bet, I bet you it's quite complicated to do those as a canvas. Cause was it Braymont that let, was it Ronnie Wood from the, uh, rolling stones or something they let him do some of the dials didn't they they made some rolling stones dials where he like hand painted them and hmm. uh, <clears throat> i'm not sure they they quite pulled that off but uh sorry ronnie wood if you watch <laughs> 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 um but uh yeah no that's uh, that's another that's another great pick uh, next up on here actually patrick this was another one of <laughs> yours all minor in a row <laughs> and it actually spurned a one of mine later on so i i i kind of was like oh actually there's another timex on here but yeah this is a i mean this this was such a was this the first sort of viral timex would you say that they Uh, they, i mean not this colorway but i mean it it was for a while i mean as a timex Mm -hmm. you know obviously they've been making watches for a long time and you know a couple years back when this came out you know this definitely Mm -hmm. was a hit I think a lot of negative reviews about the bracelet just the bracelet, your, right. your arm hair off. But, uh, yeah. you know, hey, if you if you man groom your wrists, this is a great looking watch for you. <laughs> no, man. But, uh, I'm naturally but, hairless, Patrick. Absolutely. <laughs> no. So, uh, well, the bad news about me is don't. I am here naturally yeah. hairless. Yeah. In, in one of my recent watch reviews, I uh, because I work in the emergency room, I clean my hands with some very bad chemicals and. I saw that all of my bleached hair was on my wrists, and I was like, Ooh. "Oh man, I look like a, I look like a blonde yeti on my review." So, uh, <laughs> oh wow, so definitely. I, I wish I had done a little man grooming before I took out the. Mask. <laughs> I uh, thought it adds care. I thought it adds character to your reviews. I was like, "Oh man, I really appreciate Patrick." You're like, "Man, look look at yeah. that blonde yeti." <laughs> Be comfortable with yourself, man. I'm there but, for the uh, pocket watches, not arm hair. <laughs> but uh but but hans mentioned a little earlier about the prx and i mean you know this kind of was the prx before the prx so yeah. the prx kind of gets all the credit for being like this cool wannabe you know oyster quartz you know integrated bracelet but you know this came out like four years earlier so you know they they kind of maybe yeah. in my opinion get the uh get the prize and uh you know uh, the PRX, I think, is a better looking watch, but I think the automatic version goes into the one thousand dollar range. I think you can get the, mm-hmm. uh, the you can get the quartz for for less, but kind of like everybody else, at least mostly, I was trying to stick to uh, to automatic watches. And mm-hmm. um, but you know, it's a great watch. I think the uh, the Coke looks good. They've got a Batman version as well. You know, both of them are just fun watches. And uh, you know, for two hundred and eighty nine bucks, 
you know, you can walk down the street and have a great watch. And as I said, someone might say, hey, love your watch. Yeah. yeah, they're not they're not afraid, are they, to play around, are they? Uh, I mean, Jason, you were really taken by that Pan Am one, weren't you, that they had? Mm. Yeah, I just thought it was cool. You know, I, I I don't know, man. Like, I, don't know. I, I love the movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Catch Me If You Can. And, like, mm-hmm. I always thought, like, as a kid growing up in the late 70s, early 80s, that, man, like, the 50s must have been a really cool time for, like, so much stuff was new and, you know, to travel around and stuff. So that age of... um you know, flying and that being a real thing. Now everyone just wears Crocs and sweatpants. So, I mean, sure, it's not that big of a deal. But, you know, get dressed up, go on the plane. You know, mm-hmm. it sounded pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, re- I really like this. And it seems to have just sold sold out straight away. I don't even think it was available in the UK, I think, according to a couple of uh, Palm Air mm-hmm. and tickers. Um, yeah, no, great, great pick. I uh, will we'll, we'll stick with the Timex theme. I thought this was, I think this is a brand oh. new one that they've released. I think this is pretty cool looking Timex. Is that a Domino's mm. Pizza Watch? <laughs> no, it kind of looks like that Omega Speedmaster with the <laughs> uh, different color dials. I yeah. yeah, I think it looks really smart. It's like, a uh, cool watch. I'm going to come out and say I'm not a fan. Oh, oh okay. Well, oh, they, I like the case back. Black, that one. Oh, oh yeah. you're not a fan. Oh, you know what I'm not a, a fan of? Big, gigantic yeah. pushers. The more and more like the colors, yeah, the pushers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what sucks too is the renders might not do a good job of showing the colors. I think if the colors are a little more muted in real life, they might be better. But they look yeah. really like I, I love the Zenith Chronograph glossy. with their three colors, mm-hmm. like because those kind of go together. But having a stoplight with some blue added, you know that. Uh, no, hmm. I'm on. Yeah. I'm on team no. Well, well I'm on team yes. I'm on team yes, Todd. I, I agree. There, there is actually, there's a boring version that's exactly the same that is a black dial. In fact, it looks a little bit like a, a sort of like a cheeky panda dial. Um, let me see. I'm not going to be able to find it now. Oh, here we go. There you go. Okay. Anyway, do you prefer oh. that one, Patrick? I, actually uh, I mean, too. you're right. It's completely boring and forgettable. So, you know, I I wouldn't get either, but <laughs> but I, I I don't like the color one. I, I I think this is, I think this is going to be a big hit for them. That I think there's something about the design of it that yeah, um, yeah. a little bit of Daytona in there, maybe a uh-huh. little bit of speed, yeah, a little speedy, a little Daytona, little yeah. yeah, maybe a little Zenith. I mean, I think it's got some. Pieces Look at the stuff. indices. There's a little bit of a Mars Moon Watch X33 ish. Oh yeah, the two little circles and stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah like it's asymmetrical too on the indices. The left ones yeah. are skinny, the right ones are fat. That's yeah, kind yeah. of I hate yeah, the that, date window where that is, but yeah, okay. At least it's color match though. I, I actually like the asymmetric indices. That's a I do. Yeah, that's a interesting thing to do. I don't think I've ever seen that. No, I I I, I don't know if I have. I do like it. I just don't like when they try to cram date windows in like they do. I'd rather. I prefer the watch without any date. But I know this is sacrilege to Sam. Ooh. Hey, but. so if it, if half Arabic, half Roman numerals is a California dial, can we call this one the Florida dial? Ooh, <laughs> yes. Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we call it now? Yep. Because two of the um, two of the panel members are from Florida, so I feel it's only it's only fair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I really like this one. I, I think they did a great job of it. I, I think it I think it might have even been released today, and I can't take credit for this. Matt over on the Discord group, he actually posted this there. What's the price, Matt? Yeah. At, at $179. Oh, wow. That's a great price. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, Heck wow. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. and, uh, it, you know, you've got the, the bracelet version, which with the doubt, that's 200 so... You can't go wrong there, can you? Really, for that price, twelve thousand dollars less than a Daytona at least. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> if you're a Timex collector and you really dig Timex, I mean, it's just a different Timex you'll have in your collection. Now you'll have a right. I mean, I don't know how many chronographs they make, but at least you'd have a cool one. Now, right? see now, once again, I'm going to stoke the fire. Now I look at that black one with the green, and I say one seventy nine. What a what a deal. I look at that that lollipop one for one seventy nine, and I say a toy for a toy price. Still don't like oh, it. You're brutal. You're brutal. Oh, I know I am. Yeah, I mean, and that even that Pan Am one that that um that we were quite taken by Jason is only two hundred and nineteen dollars, and that comes with like a pin badge and like a special box yeah. and everything that Pan Am branded. It's totally yeah. cool, man. You know what I mean? And, and, and yeah. Let's be honest. When you're selling a watch for two hundred nineteen dollars, you probably want it. You probably have to do a couple of extra goodies, but it's for the person that likes Pan Am or the person that likes Timexes, and yeah, or maybe likes yeah. both and. 
you know? No, 100%, 100%. I think it's cool. Uh, next up, this was from uh, Michael over on the Facebook group. Uh, he's really, he, he met the owners of this brand and he really likes it. I've not had any I've heard interaction of it. with this, but uh, it seems, it seems to be a pretty good price for a Swiss automatic, Swiss yeah. made automatic watch for $450. Um, they're 38 millimeters, so they're a bit on the, they're more sort of field watch size, but it looks like a, a, another brand that um, has a lot of fun with their kind of different, different kind of field watch designs. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So they're all it. legible though yeah i like the brown dial you don't see very yeah. many of those yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true see my big thing with the 38 millimeter field watch is your, your dial better be legible right without any help and i see so many people trying to pull off 38 millimeter field watches and i can't read your dial no one can so i mean you couldn't use it in the field but you know yeah. if you give me at least a bare contrast of being mm -hmm. able to see what time it is it's all good by me yeah, I think it's great, and it, you could also throw it on a bunge strap as well, couldn't you? If it was, if you wanted to add a little bit of extra bulk to it. Um, next up, uh, two two uh, micro brands that I quite like. I suppose Boulder's are probably a legitimate brand now, but I'm I've reviewed quite a few of these Boulder watches, and I'm every time I've been like blown away by the the ca the cases that they make out of titanium. Um, really excellent designs. The crown is almost like it looks like an in industrial kind of valve or something like that. So their design language, like none of, none of their watches that they've mm. ever produced have been have been like homages or have been like nods to other watches. They've all been this unique kind of geometric designs. Um, I, I mean, I've reviewed a few, but has anybody else seen a boulder in, in the mm -hmm. wild or seen one in person? I've I've only read about them, but I've always read good things. So, yeah. you know, I really haven't heard too much negative about them. So it must be pretty good. No, I've reviewed, I've reviewed this um, expedition. This one has a Salita movement in it. I reviewed mm -hmm. the, the medic um, and I, I reviewed quite, I've reviewed quite a few of them and every single one has been, you know, has been top quality uh, and the same with this next brand as well, this uh, rise or razor Uh I've reviewed mm. a couple of them. In fact, I believe that one of the guys actually used to work at Boulder. So they've also adopted a geometric style to them. Uh, but again, I, rev I reviewed, they sent me a prototype version of one and I was blown away mm. by the prototype. And then they actually sent me a real, uh, an actual real, real one as well once they, once they produced it. But this is another really good, high value brand. I think, mm -hmm. I, I think they're both based, based in singapore so you know, like incredible attention to detail this one's using the nh38a which for 300 dollars um i mean most of their range is about is usually less than 500 but uh, yeah they do a they do a pretty good pretty good job of these and the, again the, the, i commented in the i comment in the review of boulder and of this one that I'm continually amazed by brands like Omega that make like a huge song and dance about a titanium case. Mm -hmm. Yet these guys are knocking out, same as Citizen, precision made titanium cases in, you know, three hundred dollar watches. Oh, you just wait till my watch later. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's. I, I think I might have made these all about me. You know, these these last ones. So this is uh, this is one. This is another one from the the our uh, watch a chat group on. Uh, yeah, at work, which of course is I've I've owned this watch. I made a video saying seven reasons why this is one of the best value dive watches you can buy. This is three hundred dollars on here, but you can regularly get them for around the two hundred dollar mark, I think, on on Amazon. Uh, but this is a just a great all round solar quartz. Um, mm -hmm. You just can't go wrong with this ISO certified dive watch. Yeah, any solar watch. Uh, from citizen in my opinion is is excellent i mean they if i if i'm buying solar unless i want something like the new reissue arnie or something from seiko i'm going citizen echo drive yeah. they've got it figured out my, my mother-in-law just found an old seiko uh or a citizen echo drive in a closet she didn't realize that it was an echo drive and i stuck it out in uh, the living room for a day and boom 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 started yeah. right up so oh wow yeah. really because it's it I thought again? they when they went the when the battery went completely dead, then no. you had to no. It's not good for them, but 
it, they can recover. It just, you know, yeah. it depends on how long it's been since they've been used. But yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. So, you know, who knows how long it'll last, but, uh, but it definitely started up and, uh, yeah, I kept good time for a while there. So as I said, I'm, I'm on team echo drive as well. Mm-hmm. My buddy has a America's cup one from 2003. He got hmm. himself when he graduated boot camp. He That's still cool. has it and he's sent it into citizen one time. I think like four years ago, and they for like 125 bucks, they serviced it, swapped out the the, the, the not the cell, but the uh, thing. I can't remember the term they use for it, but I think it is a cell. That. Yeah, they swapped all that stuff out for him, sent it back. It's like new, and they didn't mm-hmm. touch it, so it's still all beat up. It's got the glass case back and everything, but it works like a charm. Yes. That's really cool, and it looks like that they've now retired the ridiculous scuba <laughs> tank box. <laughs> I, I don't, oh. I've owned a couple of citizens, and they send. If anybody's not seen it, they they sent it in like a model mm-hmm. of a scuba tank. That's the box, and you can't do anything with it. You can stick it on a shelf, maybe. But um, oh yeah, so 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 Rora the tiger said, yeah, it's a capacitor. So the the, the, the you know is that what's the still tank. it's the same one that's okay. The capacitor's in the echo drives too. That's a problem after yeah. a length of time. Okay, yeah, just it's like in Seiko's. The Seiko, yeah, they're kinetics and the echo drive. Yeah. Are, Kind of the Net- same theory, horrible. just one solar, one's not. Yeah. A good point. Yeah. Yeah. So this is and again. I mean, they do these in multiple colors now, don't they? I think there's a green one, a red yeah. one, and um, there's a black a, one. Yeah, there's a black one. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh yeah, and there's the actual. I was going to say the Pepsi one, but mm-hmm. there's the the Pepsi one. This is this is just a great all right. It looks awesome on straps and everything. This mm-hmm. is one watch that if you're recommending it to new watch yeah. like you know, new watch collectors, you just can't go wrong with it. I have the yeah. blue one. I got it for 130 bucks on Amazon in 2018. Wow. $130. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah what's and- the, I'm sorry. What was the lug to lug on it? I mean, how big is that thing? It's um... not very big. I'll tell you what, the, the, the lug width is weird. It's like 19, right, Sam? 19 or 21. It's mm-hmm. some weird size. I'm almost positive. You know, I think I, I, I reviewed this watch yeah. on the channel. I think it's twenty. I think it's twenty mil because I'm sure I wore it on different sure. straps. I'm not. You might be right. Do you know? No. Do you know what? Something's coming back to me. I think there is a. It's one of the specs somewhere says it's. I think one of the specs on Citizen website says it differently from memory. I think yeah. I'm, something's coming flooding back to me. But I know a twenty will fit on it, but I know like the official okay. says nineteen or something because like the Seiko Flightmaster, which I can't believe we didn't include the Seiko Flightmaster. But the oh, flight good. master is uh is 21 mil mm-hmm. but, seiko yeah, does that a great. lot they use 19 and they use weird numbers like that yeah and uh, we we didn't include the this the the seiko flight master on here because there's an entire youtube channel that's dedicated to just talking about that watch <laughs> <laughs> we know who you are you can huh. cut you can cut the cynicism with a chainsaw <laughs> anyway uh you know message in the comments if you don't know who i'm talking about um anyway so next up is the i I had to include spinnaker on here because i quite i've reviewed quite a few spinnakers and this bradner i really i've reviewed two of maybe it's three versions i think it's two versions of this one um there i've reviewed probably four or five spinnaker watches there was a time for sure that they were sending a lot out to reviewers so it looked it, it there was a lot of reviews for them but and i think mm-hmm. maybe that overshadowed the fact that it is for the price is a really good watch i think this one uses the nh35a but the depth on the dial and the way that the inner rotating bezel works the way it wears it's just if you like vintage watches it's got mm-hmm. like a textured dial as well if you have uh, seen one Tata Spinnaker in person? No, it's another one of those. When I was early in my watch collecting kind of travels, I was really looking a lot at some of these micro brands, and Spinnaker is certainly one of them because I think they do their dials really well. Mm-hmm. They do. Um, I'm out of my, uh, I'm kind of, it's interesting how taste change. I don't do micro brands anymore. I've kind of sold all my micro brands, yeah. um, even good ones, just because I'm concentrating on more vintage things now. But, but yeah, that dial is, uh, yeah, that dial's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I like the compression yeah. style case. I mean, it's it's done really well. Man, it's yeah, so rare really... when Seiko Todd and I agree on something. Man, we, need, yeah. we need to uh, twice, twice. Yeah, we, we need to mark these occasions. 
<laughs> yeah, it's um th- this this brand Spinnaker is owned by a the company called uh, the Dartmouth Brands, which also own Aviate, and they own they own a few others as well. So there there is a big watch making. So even though they 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 appear to be a micro brand, they're actually mm-hmm. owned by a huge watch conglomerate. So right. you you know you haven't got to worry about. You know, warranties or or any of the production they've they've been selling this watch for a long time and yeah they, they, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm a fan of uh, Spinnaker. Um, next up on here was this uh, Todd. I asked yep. you about this. Was this the, this was the the I say Mako, but everybody corrects I me saying believe it's Mako. It's a Mako like shark. Mako. Right there. Oh yeah, it. there you go. So have it on is, a NATO. Yeah, this is almost your daily wear, is it, or it's one that's frequently in rotation? Yeah, it keeps. So it, I have like this smaller watch back box, which has like more of my high end Swiss stuff, including the Omega Moon watch. Oh, and <laughs> and uh, this one's in there because this is just a yes. fantastic watch, just to throw on. I love it on the NATO, and um, I, I think Orient is really, to me, beating Seiko at what Seiko mm-hmm. used to do. Completely uh, agree. Ah, right. Magic. And they're, they are Seiko too. It's Seiko Epson. So yeah. Seiko Epson Corporation. Yeah. So it's still under the same umbrella, which means, so what do you, so how much is the, like 139, right? In-house movement, complete in-house movement down yeah. to the hair springs and oils. Um, everything is, you know, so everything's done there. Uh, 200 meters of water resistance, automatic sapphire, right? Or is it? Uh, I no, I think I think it's Hesselite. It I think the one I own had Hesselite. Well, I don't think. Yeah, not Hesselite. Sorry, um, uh, hard mineral, legs. Right? Hard legs. Yeah. So maybe it's hard legs. But I mean, look at this raised indices. So mineral I crystal. mean, they're they're not painted on. They're actually you know on the dial raised indices. I mean, heck, I mean, considering what you get, this is again another reason why I've kind of left some left micro brands. If I'm interested in something like that, uh, uh, Orient has a lot of what I like. Right. Yeah, no, I I steered a, a guy at work towards an Orient because you know he he's just kind of getting into the hobby and he wanted mm-hmm. to get a, a, a just a good rugged watch for all all occasions and you know as I said you you get so much watch for the buck with an Orient. Yeah, yeah I, I've owned this watch as well, and I I own the 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 black dial version of it, and it is very well made. It's a, it's a very well made watch. So, I don't know if you've ever heard this, Todd, but there's a few people that. The the logo rubs them up the wrong way. The uh, yeah, when I first I saw it, it. Yeah. I don't mind it. When I first saw it too, you're right. I'm like, that's kind of way too complex. But yeah, yeah it's it's fine. I, I, we I talked about this it. before. You you probably shouldn't do your name and a picture. Like pick Sweet. one or the other. You know what I mean? Like, and then Orient's logo is cool, but it'd be a lot cooler if they made the logo bigger. They took away the word Orient, mm-hmm. and you actually got to look because someone brought up Traska earlier. And I've always liked Traska. Their logo's cool, but they also sometimes do their name and the logo. And I'm like, well, that sucks. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Seiko's just giving you Seiko. And right, you know, yeah. I Grand quite Seiko's like to do that too. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the logo. And look at that. You're getting, you know, you're getting raised, uh, you know, raised indices. You're getting the, yep. um, you know, the day window. Day. Yeah, ten yeah, percent off right now. Ten percent off. And they, they're actually on sale on here. Look, two hundred and ten dollars. I mean, that's an absolute steal, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and an and, and for steal. anyone that anyone that's newer, I've never had an issue with hard legs. I've had yeah. all kinds of watches with hard legs. I've hit the side of a storm door with the hard legs crystal, and nothing happened to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think you got to take it off and throw it off of a building onto a parking lot, right? Or something or, to have, but I mean, right. Or All you right. just get it caught just right, like you catch it on like a yeah. like a door strike plate or something. I mean, but you're right. I've never had a, yeah. and that's problem. probably just karma. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, that's probably on the user. I'm just kidding. Yeah, oh, I, I, oh. Uh, yeah. I think this Come is awesome. actually this is probably if we were doing watches. I know we were if we were doing watches about you know that were less than. Three hundred dollars. I mean, this would be this would be the winner. It's actually yeah. I often forget about this watch, but it really is, really is a great a great watch for the for the money. Absolutely. Yeah, Nevin here at Ferguson talks about uh, the Kamasu, the red one, the red dial mm-hmm. one. Oh, it is super super gorgeous. Yeah, uh, I think I like right it. there. There it is on the very oh, left. Oh, here's one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Oh, it's oh, just, that's uh, even within the budget. It's within the budget. It's it's a this is a little bit more of an upscale watch from the Mako Two, but um, it's just yeah, that red dial to me is is gorgeous, and they have the green. Oh, that green's too. nice and the blue. I mean, the other yeah. thing as well, which um, I always forget about Orient, is they have a sort of like a high end version, don't they? Their Orient Star, is it called? Orient Star, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got it's... power reserves and all that crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what else I like about Orient, and they do it in a really sneaky way, is that they'll take some of their more modern case shapes and all this stuff, and then throw in like really jazzy, like late '60s, early '70s colors. Yeah, like here, like that red one. Mm -hmm. That red one, like you, like you should be, well, the red Kamasu with the gold. Yeah, like you should be in some kind of lounge somewhere in like a booth. The lights are low. They only serves eighteen ounce steaks with like scotch. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like everyone's smoking everywhere. Yeah, everyone's smoking everywhere. Yeah, yeah like in the bath, like everywhere. They're just looking and, at it, pieces of art. That it's yeah. just a blank. It's just a blank one color piece on a on a canvas, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, that's so inspiring." Well, because you know, some some brands will try to go like all oh, the whole aesthetic being from a time period and not quite get it right, or or their audience isn't from that time period, so doesn't really get it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Orient does a good job of someone's, and they're like, "Hey." We can do this color scheme with the dial and the index indices, and everything else looks modern, and it's just it's really fun. Yeah, that's there's another fun one. Look, two hundred eighty. That's yeah. Uh, yeah, really, really cool. Well, um, let's dive. Uh, and well, uh, Jason, I cut you off at the start of the show, but now you can bring it home. So yes, um, this is your redemption arc and my my uh, my villainous downfall but, for cutting yep, you off. Yeah, scroll up, scroll up to where it says. Uh, watches and go to the tight the bottom one va nahu titanium okay so that's this one uh is this, this yeah one? there's yeah, some right here there we go mm. okay so i'm wearing i'm wearing the steel version right now right and i'm gonna tell anyone there's a wait list but they do a really good job you go down to the bottom of the page you insert your email you hit register they'll give you your number and like i was all the way up in the like 1200s and i no longer Ooh. am that far up um and you can get a titanium. Let, let's just go through the specs real quick. 42 millimeters. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a 46 millimeter diameter, the whole thing, they say, with a crown. The lug to lug's 50, but the lugs are curved. Mm. So if you have a bigger wrist like me, it, it hugs it a little bit. Um, 22 millimeter lug width, they always throw in an extra strap, which you get to pick. Uh, the height's 14, but you can't. I mean, look at this thing. You can't even really tell. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it's brushed screw down crown all of their stuff is iso certified so when you get it you can actually go do the do the thing and uh let's see what else yeah i mean the titanium's 350 bucks yeah that bracelet yeah. looks really nice too how do you oh, like that, that oh this engineer bracelets it, yeah you notice like my clasp is all jacked up because i tried it on the strap and i love the bracelet too much okay. i love the bracelet i yeah. mean look at six six micro adjust sections oh, yeah. yeah you know what i mean it was easy they're uh they're screwed down i'm almost positive they're screws i don't have my my glasses aren't that good um <laughs> but you know it's got some zen styling cues mm-hmm. but there's like this one's the white one the white color date will they'll do a color matching date will um i i can't speak how, i can't even wait to get the titanium because once i get the titanium i'll let everybody in the chat know this bad boy's going up for sale box papers the whole nine I'll, I'll clean up the class for if you want it, but it's got the helm on the class. I mean, it's just, wait, listen to this. Just listen. <laughs> Can you hear it? Oh, yeah. It's a great bezel action. The wow. loom kicks butt. Um, they just do a really good job. And the thing is, you just got to wait. So I, I was on the wait list for the Cura Burry. I got it. I realized it, I, I didn't like it me personally as much as my Va Natu. So I sold it to a buddy of mine. He loves it. He rides motorcycles. It's a big old chunky watch and all that stuff. He digs it. But I'm telling you, if you don't go get your name on the Va Natu wait list for a titanium, you're missing out. And what they do is, just so everyone knows, you'll go on the wait list. You'll get an email to the email you register a week ahead of time. And it'll say, hey, we're going to be sending you an email shortly mm-hmm. with some information and directions. When you Once you get that, you have 48 hours. And then there's no time limit once you're inside. Once you go in, you have 48 hours to close out the cart. So you have plenty of time. There's no rush. You get to pick 
the, the you know which colorway you want you get to pick what extra strap you want and it, you know etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you hit submit payments there mm -hmm. and i think it takes like a week a week and a half to get it easy yeah, day thanks. can you yeah. track your number like you said yes. like 1200 yeah okay. good question patrick and so after you put your stuff in and it gives you your initial number you can go back to the website and you go back to the bottom. It asks you to input your email if you're in the queue. And when you hit your, when you put your email in and hit enter, it'll tell you your number position. Huh. So how long have you been in the queue and how much has your numbers shifted? I've been in the queue for a year and a half and my number has shifted 90%. Wow. Nice. I mean, that's I'm not giving, I'm not giving, I'm not giving my number away. But yeah. I'm telling you right now. That the Super second impressive that it, for a company, though. I mean, as I said, oh, yeah. that they can have a two-year waiting list, and and people are still, you know, chomping at the bit for the watch. You know, that's well. Here's the thing: impressive. in the last couple of years, they, I was on. They used to do that weird thing where we're going to release them at this time, log in and get it, or you're going to get an email to go do it. And like I tried it once, and it kept crashing, and I lost I lost the opportunity to get it. Mm -hmm. um, so I emailed and said, "Hey," and I said, "Sorry, we can't do anything about it." But they were like really apologetic. The owner, uh, gentleman, I think his name is Mark, he emailed me. He's like, I'm sorry. It's like, no problem. But he's like, we're going to redo the system. And now they have this queue system. You go register. And 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 now there's a there's a titanium Curaburi. Yeah, the Curaburi titanium, which mm. is pretty cool. I had the regular one. I'm going to tell you right now, the finishing, the, the build quality, mm -hmm. the, the, the legibility, Bezel inserts are lubed. I mean, there's, there's the crowns are signed, but not, they're engraved. I mean, it's crazy, man. The case backs are engraved. Mm. It's nuts. It's just a, it's just a killer watch. And if you wanted something that you could take and absolutely beat up and go do water, whatever you want to do, it's uh, I would dare anyone to find a better. Well, I guess if you had an in-house movement that anything type yeah. of in-house movement would be better. This is an H35, but. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. really, 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 really good watch yeah. for the money. Mm. Awesome. And this this was not sponsored by Helm, but it should be Helm. <laughs> if you ever want. But we're ready for the sponsorship, Helm. We're yeah. ready. Yeah. Uh, well, that's been great. Uh, thanks to the panel. I know we've missed a lo we've missed a load. Uh, I appreciate everyone's oh, yeah. uh, comments in the comment section. It's probably it's so you forget that how exciting the sub five hundred dollar range is, and also the sub thousand dollar range, even the you know around the two as we've shown some that were around the 200 to 250 range is is a very exciting so yeah, we wanted to show the breadth of watches because i think the last couple of shows we've definitely been doing a lot of that sort of a, a few of the higher end sort of mid luxury so we wanted to give some love to the sub 500 dollar mark so thanks for the panel thanks everyone for being so active in the comments always very much appreciated and we'll see you on sunday for the sunday social thanks everyone bye not everyone bye, -bye. bye, -bye.